Hello, this is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to bring you a um, Nasara Jasara myth. We're going to talk about how everyone, it talks about how everyone on the planet is going to receive a universal basic income. Bring it up. So a lot of you have heard about this, but maybe before some of you are going to be mad at me. Please don't shoot the messenger. I'm not trying to make any money off of this issue. I'm not trying to ruin your day, but I want to give you correct expectations. Okay. Some people are giving expectations just off the, you know, off the cuff and they're not thinking with a macro statement, which means, um, what could happen to the economy? Okay. I want to kind of hit you with a couple of videos. It's kind of a, a cute um, idea here that, that people are looking at and talking about with that too. So let's um, bring these little puppies up here. Okay. Hold on one second. Five reasons universal basic income. Let me kind of let you see the screen. Oops, sorry. Got to bring it over here. Sorry about that. And we'll show you a little bit about this. So you can kind of see this is a guy just talking about a UBI and, uh, you know, he, he, not saying he got everything right. I'm just telling you this is what he's doing. So here we go. Well, it's a bad idea. It's really expensive. It would lead to massive tax increases and reallocation away from other areas such as education and healthcare. To pay everyone the same. You'd be closing down targeted needs like unemployment, disability, and those who are most deserving get less, whilst billionaires would get more. You'd be paying people to stay at home. Social cohesion would take a hit, leading to further social issues. You're losing the incentive to participate. Benefits currently lead towards meaningful work. UBI promises a lifetime of dependence. Artificial intelligence is raising big questions about the world of work and the future. And the more that world leaders focus on UBI as some kind of solution, the less they consider real or more practical solutions to what we do about the fast changing world caused by AI. Okay, so it gives some of the ideas that you're seeing in there, um, you know, some of the real interesting point out there that, that we need to kind of consider. Uh, so I'm bringing up this one as well. Um, just got to re-bring it back up on the screen here. Um, and then let's do another one to show you another kind of video. Again, we're going to use another guy that, that talks here. Five reasons. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All Canadians are good. Sorry. It kind of messes up that screen with that too when we do this. I got to re reshare it and get you going here again. Here we go. We're going to start receiving $2,000 a month. What I'm talking about is UBI or universal basic income. So true story, my 75 year old dad brought this up to me last Sunday. And basically it's designed not to replace people's income, but more to supplement it and help them with basic living expenses like food, shelter, rent, or mortgage. It's designed specifically to help people who live in countries with high living expenses. They've been testing this project in Canada, but also all around the world. Seems pretty good, right? Anyhow, I asked my dad some questions. Why are they testing this project right now? Is it to prepare for when AI comes in and takes many of the jobs that we hold? Will UBI be distributed through CBDCs or central bank digital currencies? And how would you feel when your UBI is programmed so you can only spend it on certain goods or products and in certain geographical areas? What if this smart money was so good at tracking spending that each year you receive less and less until you had just enough to survive? You wouldn't be able to invest you wouldn't be able to buy assets. You wouldn't be able to plan for your retirement. Would you be happy even if you owned nothing? I want to know what you think in the comments below. Um, and then I want to show you one last one here. Just, just some viewpoints out here. We're going to show you one that has kind of a crazy view. Show and some people are paying tax before not owning their taxes. 
that dividend is supposed to be provided as a tax, a negative income tax, which means you come back to. So you you did not see something that's a tall, which is personal taxes, it's the dividend as a tall, which is a form of universal basic income, and then the guaranteed livable basic income pops up to fulfill the way the father is living. So now you can see the single person with basic income. But I say we need tax reform along with this proposal. But it's the all of the funding coming from the increase in corporate taxation, especially on banks and mega corporations, billionaires, and look at the churches paying their bill here. And so uh, I'll throw away the can't see. So here's what you're seeing with um this silliness here, and, and it misses the point. So I gave you the crazy view of this one woman, and I'm trying to share with you what you know she's talking about here. Um, you know, so we're we're given a couple different different kind of setups there of what they're saying, and then this one is the left left view. This is the communist way: redistribute the income from the people who have it. Make sure taxes come up and pay for this now. Lots and lots of people are, are having different ways, and we'll explain that as we go along. So again, you heard the answer to this, but I want to say it again. Who created a UBI? It's called a universal basic income. The people that created it are the Great Reset idiots. These are the cabal. The very first time I personally met, as a personal uh, circumstance, because uh, I hadn't at the time, wasn't following much of the politics because I had just really pretty much turned off on um, any of the TV. Um, and and uh, I think this is probably about uh, six or seven years ago was Bernie Sanders. And he's starting to talk about it. He's gaining a lot of popularity. I mean, a really old guy who drives around with many cars and has many houses and got hundreds of millions of dollars. And you, and you ask yourself, He's the guy that's pushing forward something for the people when he's stealing from the people. Okay. So you have to kind of wonder a little bit about that. Um, and those are the people that actually set that up. Now, again, we showed you a lot of those UBI TikTok points. And some of the points that I wanted to bring out to you is the nature of what they were kind of getting into. And, and one of the fear points is that AI, artificial intelligence, would replace your jobs. The second point that they're kind of uh, they're kind of bringing out again, these are not necessarily awakened positions, but it does kind of give you an idea of um, some of the thought process that that's that's um, going out there. And, and when you think about that stuff, it'll uh, create fear in you because then we have CBDC, central bank digital currency. Where does that come from? Well, that's part of great reset thinking. That's part of reforming the Fed. And we're going to talk about the QFS coming up in a couple of episodes. I've been really, God's been like downloading in me a way of explaining the QFS. We're going to put it in a PowerPoint and try to show you how the, how the real QFS is going to work. But what CBDCs are, a, they're another fiat system. Okay. This would come from a fiat system. Now, I know a lot of people, when they hear this, they go, well, yeah, you say CBDCs are something that, you know, only the Great Reset comes up with. Yes. Okay. But I've heard that we are going to be, you know, the, the, the um, how should I say this, that the Nasara people are talking about it for, um, for the world. Where does that come from as a concept? And you go, well, if I need to be paid back, this is the, this is the, I want you to understand motivation when people come up with this. I need to be paid back for an idea. So let, let me tell you, as a person who's been around this Nassar thing for literally pushing on for, you know, for, yeah, four years. But I'd been preparing for it um, without knowing what the word was. Well, some people did. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a few people that did in the past. And as I've learned that, that over the time. But um, I've really been preparing for the key features of this since 2011. So what happens here 
is that there was a there, there's tranches of funds out there that were taken from the cabal through the executive orders 13818, you know, even 13848, and were taken from them and dumping their funds into another fund to be able to give back to the people. Now, every time when you go down to the deep roots of Nasara, it is, and I always kind of, I want you to understand this. Number one, we're, we have to take out the Fed. Now, the Fed is taken out by the replacement of the QFS. Real powerful point here. We're unhooking the Fed. These two things of the QFS and the Fed are working in tandem, or the SWIFT system of the Fed. This is the monetary flow that comes in. So what happens is we're turning off the Fed so that the, the QFS sticks around. Number two, the number two point is going into a gold-backed currency that is constitutional in nature. So when we go into a gold-backed currency, we're going to a constitutional nature for that. What we're saying is that we want to utilize uh, the, the first article in the, in the 10th section where it says you need to pay your debts by gold and silver. Well, that right there is anti-Fed um, and anti the upgraded system of the CBDCs through um, the new SWIFT systems that they would they would push out. There, okay, and so again, why don't you put you on two different kind of realms? Then we see people that that started to show up, and I remember I'm not going to name his name because you know everyone gets all pissed off when they hear this this name. But this guy started to push out a uh, a topic. When, when this kind of came out here, so I'm, I'm trying to share with you this point. We talked about debt forgiveness. People would come to a lot of the truthers and say, you know, that's unfair because I paid off my debts, so I don't get anything, any benefit from, from Nasara. This is like the number one complaint I hear outside of this UBI, you know, idea. And, and they go, well, it needs to pay me back. I need to be compensated. I'm sorry. Now I need to be compensated in that way, right? And you go, and, and they're really, they're talking about fairness to themselves. Okay. So that's their, in their, in, that's their initial motivation. And yes, obviously, most of us have an egocentric viewpoint upon the world. If you're starving and you're struggling, you, you, you want to be rescued in that way with that too. Someone keeps plugging me here on, on the cell phone with that too. Uh, so what 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 you're you're seeing is that that nature of, of fairness. Then they started saying, well, you know, you'd get back your interest, you know, from from the debt if you paid it off, and then you wouldn't pay off debts if you just got them. And I mean, they were coming up with all kinds of things. The same kind of concept came up with the bonds. So bonds, or uh, the case of a trust. The case of trust and bonds, they are real things. The cabal takes your, um, your name and your ability to create income, and they have been profiting off of you for generations in essence, okay? If you want to say generations like the, uh, the, the Z, the Y, the X, you know, I'll be down this, I'm, how I'm calling the generations in this more limited viewpoint here when we're talking about that. And so we, they've been profiting for a very, very long time off of that. And so what, what you see is that, well, we should get paid back because they've been using it for us. And so it's put in a fund so it can give back to the people. And the reality is when you start seeing that, there, that becomes part of the control mechanism. And, and, and I always say, when you get that that kind of thing you're you get that ubi whether it's see some people want to talk about well you're going to get millions of dollars up front or the over 65 are going to get millions of dollars where the under 65 are going to get you know um, a 1200 a month payment and so what happens is there is a problem inside of what that would do to our economy now when you go backward to 2020 and you see that they were closing down offices they were closing down um services 
people started to get more and more levels of UBI. One of the first ones on, on an overall realm is this concept of UBI that we're going to give you 600 bucks. And that comes from the Second Cares Act. This is where we get also the, uh, the PPP loans, but people were getting money back. Um, and, and we're thinking, oh, that's, that's a type of that. That's a type of repayment program. But I want you to go also into the migrant circumstance that, that occurs. And so, so we're seeing very significant reports in some of these blue, blue cities and states that they are giving them credit cards and gas cards and you know hotel bills, which is another type of UBI with that. And, and here's what it does to people who get a UBI. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to juxtapose a point. Let's say we have a person who makes $36,000 a year, which in a gross nature, which, which we're going to talk just on gross uh, income, that's $3,000. Now I, I could go farther if we wanted to say, well, with after taxes, it might be 2200 bucks a month. Okay. So let's, but let's just move from a gross standard and, sh and she's making you know, thirty-six thousand dollars a year or three thousand dollars a month, and so she gets a UBI of fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, whatever, right? So now she's making um, on a gross level, you know, uh, forty-five hundred dollars or maybe what is that, thirty-seven hundred bucks? You know, after the tax kind of thing. Now to make her thirty-six thousand dollars, there's you know, and then they say, well, you have to do work, and I go. Okay, so she just goes to her job and she really doesn't have motivation because she's doing the job, wh wherever that might be. She stocks shelves at Walmart or whatever she, whatever she might be doing, right? Um, and yet what happens, there's not, not a lot of motivation to move forward. Now, she doesn't have to work maybe another job because of that capability. And you go, oh, that's a great thing. And yet what you have to succeed. And me as this entrepreneur, and, and I do everything I do is entrepreneurial, doesn't mean that I, I get paid for it. You guys don't understand. I get paid less and less for my own practice than I ever have. But I work 70, 80, 100 hour weeks. I also don't take any money from you know anything I get from YouTube or you know book writing. I don't take any money from that. So you go, wait a second, you're working harder, but you're not making as much money. Yeah. Motivation isn't just about money. And you go, oh, yeah, but you're making a lot of money because you're a doctor. No, because I don't pay myself very much at all. You'd be surprised if I told you that number. But the point is, is that when we look at what would happen, is it would become a demotivator. That woman that was making $3,000 or $2,000 a month, which pick any number you want to come up with. She gets the extra fifteen hundred bucks, or whatever you might say that that number should be, and she's going to like do less. Trust me, we're seeing it every day. People think that they can live on um, unemployment, which is one of the most major UBIs that occurred in twenty twenty and beyond. So people are getting extended time frames of unemployment. Now we're talking not just three months; we're talking on uh, nine months, a year and a half, because um, COVID was in the way. And I understand what they were doing, but there was not a motivation to go get a job. And so, but here's the thing, post Masara, we need people who are willing and wanting to work and do the things that they need to work. I'm not talking about the 80 year old grandmother who I saw as a greeter slash, you know, stalker, in Walmart, that, that bothers the snot out of me. Masara is about raising that um, that income for the Social Security and the disability people and the veterans so that we're compensating because they don't need to work anymore. They, they, they put in a ton of time to do this. And, and it, it's, it's criminal, the net nature of that. But, the, but saying that you're going to give that UBI creates dismotivation. And so I know this isn't thrilling to you to hear, but if you did that, you would 
pull back. You would slow down potential growth. How do you actually encourage growth without doing this UBI conversation? And, and basically helicopter money, a ton of, I mean, a ton of cash. The answer is, is to, to first take away the debts. Number two, to um, take away the um, disincentive in income, which is the IRS. And then what you start doing from there is you, and that will actually reduce prices when we're into a gold standard, which means that your buying power is improved. This is part of that gold standard. And so you're starting to see people will incrementally notice, wait a second, I can do more and they don't have to do that you know, menial job and never have that capability. And then she's saying, well, I don't just want to make $3,000 a month kind of thing. I really want to go back to school. We're thinking of a, of a person right now um, who is an LPN at an assisted living um, facility where my, my father-in-law is. And this woman's wonderful. And Diane wants to go and get her RN degree. Well, in this way, she has the ability to do this. Actually, Trump has even talked about ways that you can go to school. And, and without that incredible over charge of, of going back to school. This is a person who's going to do more and more in the areas of, of work. This is wonderful. And you should be excited for that kind of thing. You should be excited that the cabal doesn't get all of the governmental contracts for roads and schools and buildings and everything else. You start seeing the normal people doing this. And you know what? who gets Forget about the doctors, lawyers, teachers, whatever. I mean, people are working in a white collar kind of circumstance. Do you know who is um, comes home more satisfying? It's the person in the blue collar fields. They get to go. They put together. They're putting together a house. Let's say, okay. Let's say they do drywall, and and they can walk. I mean, they can walk in and see just bare bones, and they can walk out maybe by the end of the day. And then the end of the week and the end of the month, and that house is done. And, and they see the steps of that. That is seeing the fruit of your labor with that, too. This is Ecclesiastes all over. If you read the book of Ecclesiastes, it says that there's you know nothing new in the sun. It's all it's all worthless to you know to accomplish all this, all this uh, fighting. But in the end of Ecclesiastes, it says, a man, no woman would say, um, has nothing better than to love his family and to be have enjoyment in his work. That's what he's that's what we're talking about here. We need people to be internally motivated to do greater and greater things without the disincentive that the world has done or to press them down and just to live upon the UBI idea. Now I'm sorry if that makes you upset. Do not make comments. If you make comments that are rude about it, I will delete you off of the YouTube channel. If you want to do that, that's, that's up to you. But if you make comments and you start doing rude things, I will actually report you to the, um, the police. So be careful about how you want to do this. You can disagree with me, and plenty of people do. That's okay. But I'm trying to give you correct expectations so that you know what's actually coming because the reality is. When you look down the road and when there's more abilities for creation of jobs and better jobs and better circumstances, you're actually going to be way farther ahead than you ever would be with any ridiculous UBI. So I'm trying to show you how the, how the system would actually be gained against you and the UBI and actually against each country that would even consider it because it always is a dismotivator. So I'm sorry that gives you that, that kind of stuff, but you can actually download, and, and Dr. Scott Young, you can download a 14 page uh, statement that talks about you know, point by point um, some of the issues that we talk about in the SARS. So you can go in there and download that kind of stuff. And I have a bunch of articles in there with that too. So thanks so much for listening. I appreciate your, your help.